Navajo County Connection. I'm your host, Jason Whiting, Navajo County Supervisor for District 3. And today we have a special guest with us, one of our other co-hosts that does the show quite often and does it a lot better than I do. Uh, now the Vice Chairman of the Navajo County Board of Supervisors, Donna Faye Whitesinger. Thank you for being here today. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. I know how busy you are. And I uh, wanted to take an opportunity to recognize some of the many things that you're doing here in the communities. Um, one of the things, if you don't mind, I want to kind of jump right into it because we've got a, quite a bit to talk about, if that's all right. <laughs> no, I don't mind at all. Um, I want to talk with, the, let the audience know a little bit more about who you are. I know you grew up in this area and uh, talk about that a little bit and what made you decide to get involved at the Navajo County Board of Supervisors. Sure. Well, thank you. I mean, it's such a, a pleasure to be on the other side of the table. Um, and I did. I grew up here. Um, I'm born and raised in White River, in a sense. Um, I'm from the White Mount Apache tribe. I live here in Pine Top, or I live in Pine Top Lakeside. Um, have been, uh, I guess, in the community in a lot of years in investing in young people. My background is education and um, have worked in the education field for about 16 years. And the transition to the county um, came about five years ago when we started discussing, uh, well, one, my role in the community and a leadership capacity and what that could look like. And that was an interest to me. And so I felt like, okay, you know, this is a good step for me. And not only um, personally, but looking at the perspective of my tribal community and the community that I live in and trying to bridge this gap that sometimes exists between the two communities and having them um, maybe work together in some capacity. Well, thank you for doing that and thank you for your service. Um, I used to have a business that was in that area. That business has now moved down into Sholo, just a little more central for us. However, on our, in our business, when I was up there, one of the things that I realized with many of the businesses was uh, the need for things like the sunrise. When sunrise was open, those businesses really did mm -hmm. uh, better during the winter and they counted on that. And uh, if it didn't do well, it impacted them greatly. That also obviously impacted uh, the Apache tribe and, and that was something that was meaningful to them as an organization. So being able to be, represent both of those communities is something that's been needed. Um, and we're lucky to have great leadership like somebody like you that's done that. Speaking of leadership, it's my understanding that until you served as chairman of the board that the Navajo County Board of Supervisors had not had a female uh, chairwoman. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. And um, something that I wear I'm kind of with a badge of honor, um, you know, in being in this capacity for the last five years, I certainly know that I am in a privileged situation, that most of the conversations that I'm maybe one of a few minority women who are represented. And certainly, um, in having that perspective and having that voice and being able to have that opportunity to represent Navajo County that way has been such an honor. And so I do wear that with a badge of honor. Well, as you should, I had the opportunity, the fortunate opportunity of being the vice chairman at the time and supporting you and really admired your leadership. I could tell very early on that you take an objective look, trying to hear all sides and try and come up with what the right answer is as you try to make your decisions. Um, and so I've always admired that uh, in the way that you do that. So thank you for your service there. Thank you. Um, what an honor and uh, glad that we have you in, in the capacity and now back at the vice as vice chairwoman. Um, one of the things I know that you're passionate about is kids. You're very passionate about kids and one of the things that you're involved with is First Things First. Do you mind telling us about your level of involvement there and what you guys do with First Things First? Uh, well, I'm not even quite certain how many years. I believe that I've been serving about five or six five to six or seven years in the regional partnership with the White Mountain Apache tribe. Um, first Things First looks at dollars that are given from the state to provide services for zero to five year old children um, and helping in brain development and helping with um, dental, anything that a child needs to be able to thrive and be able to be successful um, by the time that they're five years old and enter kindergarten. And I've been so grateful to be part of that conversation because I certainly know um, just from my experience in working in education um, the importance of working with our earliest or youngest children in our communities and so proud of the work that we've been able to accomplish and being able to impact um, the children who live within our area or within our region. 
Well, you've done a great job there, and I know that's something that's important to this region, so your leadership in that area has been appreciated. Do you mind, I recognize you may not be able to mention a child by name, but can you think of a situation or a story of a child that you guys have been able to help out that uh, has meant something to you? Well, one of the things that um, when we look at there's, there aren't services for every child. Um, in services meaning, let's look at preschool systems. So we have um, 2,500 children who fall within that category. Head Start services about 300 children. We have an early learning center. So there's a significant need for all of the other children who don't have services. And so one of the things that we've looked at and I've been so proud of is being able to provide more preschools. And so in the time that I've been there um, and being able to open one preschool in Seven Mile, and currently I'm working on opening a new preschool in um, CBQ, in the community of CBQ. And those things are so important in being able to allow families to have the opportunity to bring their children to a center um, in their own community. And from, you know, the enrollment in CBQ, that's been so appreciated by family members who live locally. Doesn't surprise me. It kind of sounds like your leadership style, building bridges and opening doors for opportunities for those that may not have had them before. Thank you for doing that. If you don't mind, I want to kind of change gears. I know that you have a number of things you're involved with, one of those being uh, the conservation legacy. Do you mind telling us a little bit about what that is and what your involvement is there in the conservation legacy? Well, conser <coughs> conservation legacy is a national board. Um, it looks over um, cores uh, from across the country. And so one of, and how I got involved in this is that we developed a, the White Mountain Youth Corps or with individuals within the community, I helped support them in being able to develop our own core within our community. And I saw how that was so important in seeing how students were being stewards, being able to develop their own conscientious, I guess, mind building to be able to understand why um, it was important for them to protect the wilderness, why it was important for them to be part of that conversation, why it was important for them to invest in themselves and be able to articulate that. And so because of that, um, I, I, I felt very passionate and wanted to be part of, I guess, the bigger conversation. And that's what um, Conservation Legacy does, um, that it provides cores across the country and looking also at providing veteran services or even those who might be in careers and wanting to transition into a new career, um, either in um, stewardship, land stewardship, um, or other efforts that are nonprofit industries. So all of those things are certainly valuable in our community and was, I'm grateful to be part of just the dialogue and seeing what that looks like um, on the national level. Well, thank you for your efforts in that area. Obviously important here, opening up again opportunities to be able to recognize the beauty that we have around us, how to be able to be responsible stewards of that and helping that next generation to be a mm -hmm. part of that conversation. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for your leadership there. One of the areas, uh, another area, imagine that, that you are also uh, a leader, in fact, uh, the chairwoman of, is the White Mountain Regional Transportation Board. Um, some viewers may be aware of that and what it does. Do you mind talking about what the White, White Mountain Regional Transportation Board does for this area? Um, well, we have uh, partnerships throughout the region um, extending into Apache County, and so we have townships um, who participate, including um, Pine Top Lakeside, Sholo, um, Taylor, Snowflake, and other surrounding communities and counties sit at the table in discussing what transportation needs look like within their particular communities. Um, and when we talk about transportation, it's broadened a bit, not only looking specifically at roadways, but how do we um, prepare in, for the future in looking at, well, a bicycling or walking and um, trying to look at our, our trans transportation capacity in a different way. Um, that's one thing that we do, but we also try to develop a message. Um, as we know, you know, state lawmakers and legislators are 
big part of how we receive dollars within our communities. And each of our townships are impacted by that. And so how do we understand one another's needs and how do we prioritize and be able to go um, either one before the state legislator to be able to discuss that or looking at the street state transportation board and being able to discuss what are our regional needs and being able to um, support one another and being able to, I guess, support a particular roadway or whatever that particular need is. And it becomes a collective conversation conversation um, because I think one of the things that happens is that if we're not partnering um, everybody's trying to get a piece of the pie and it makes it a lot more difficult to get a piece of that pie when everybody's trying to get it but if you have a collective um, board who is having those discussions about how do we prioritize and supporting one another um, the conversation goes much farther and um, people are able to put um, work I guess to the roads. Well, thank you. Yeah. If you don't mind a follow-up question on that. So it sounds like, which is, again, typical of your leadership, which is very important, is it sounds like that you're able to take a group that all has differences of opinions and then get alignment so that our region is able to be aligned on what our desires are. So we're working together that rather than in opposition or sometimes bumping into each other and then carrying that voice down to the state. What, what does that look like? So you're working with, so you guys carry that voice down there. Are you working with ADOT, with legislators, with both? In, in carrying that message. And I, like you said, I suspect that carries a lot more impact and power as you guys are unified in that voice. So is it ADOT, is it the legislature, both? Um, it's both. We work a lot with um, ADOT or their, their board um, in developing our message or sharing our message with them as they prioritize the dollars and being, are able to earmark dollars specific for our region um, and trying to be uh, proactive in the five-year plan. So we're not um, trying to get dollars when the plan is completed, but being part of the plan development and making sure that our region is part of that conversation. Um, all of those things are part of that. And certainly it's very true that everybody comes to the table with different perspectives and different needs and trying to develop a, a regional perspective of well, this is the, the road that will bring the most impact to our region. Those types of conversations become fundamental to how we organize and prioritize. Well, thank you. You created a, lot, uh, a voice that's united, which makes it louder or more, or more powerful. And obviously, it sounds like you're getting way out. And as we know, ADOT plans um, fairly early out. And it sounds mm -hmm. like you're getting in front of them in that planning process, which is important. And thank you to you and the members of that uh, transportation board for your efforts uh, to be able to work for this region. So thank you for that. Uh, I wanna go on and talk about the NACOG Board of Directors. I know that you sit on that Board of Directors representing the county. Um, our viewers may or may not know, but NACOG is Northern Arizona Council of Governments. The federal government has some money that's brought into the state and then the state transfers those into the COGS and then allows the COGS to be able to administer those services at a local level. So it's important that we have a voice uh, as we are part of the Northern COG um, as to what's done with those monies. Do you mind telling us a little about your involvement on that board of directors? Uh, well, much like the transportation board, it really is about prioritizing needs and being able to hear from each of the, I guess, the perspectives who sit at that table um, so that uh, they are represented and those dollars can be avail be available to support those particular communities. Um, there's investment in um, senior citizen centers or even just future development. So if you're looking at tourism industry, um, how can you utilize those dollars to upgrade your um, the beautification or sidewalk? I know those were particular investments that conversations were around recently. And um, so all of that, you know, the things that I have learned is that community participation, local community participation is important. If we're not um, vocalizing our local perspective, it makes it very difficult for all of these entities who might have the resources to better champion for us. Um, if we're not at those tables, they don't know that we have a need. And so being part of those conversations are important for our region to making sure that um, we're part of the conversation and making sure that dollars, future dollars, you know, they're not always readily available. We all hope that they are, 
but that's part of, you know, kind of plugging away at the conversations and making sure that there's participation and that we're represented. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, uh, just as an example, I know that my first involvement that I realized that was, had the touch of NACOG and because of leaders like you was with my wife's uh, grandparents. They, as they got in their elderly years, the family was taking care of them, but they started to receive some services from uh, the senior center that was there in that community and they did meals on wheels and they would bring meals into their home which helped the family who took turns staying in the home and trying to help out with uh, with their grandparents and uh, they participated in a meaningful way in trying to help them out um, and they brought food by there later on being on the town council we took opportunities to go and serve uh, serve lunches uh, mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving and Christmas and it was a neat and humbling opportunity to be able to go there and see I had no idea how many people came in and counted on that food you know and yes. uh, and just the camaraderie the chance to be able to come in and spend some time with people and be able to talk mm -hmm. with people that are uh, in the same um, phase of life and enjoying that and getting to see them uh, was a neat experience um, and then now being on the uh, Board of Supervisors uh, seeing how that funding comes, um, much of that funding comes through yeah. NACOG mm -hmm. and those things. And while they have ups and downs and cuts and those things that occur, appreciate you advocating and being on that uh, board of directors. Your service is, is appreciated as there are many areas, as you talked about. I think even first things first, there's some funding that comes from them uh, that goes down to that. But really appreciate your efforts there uh, as I know it's meaningful to our region. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about, it's something that uh, is near and dear to my heart, and I suspect more than anything, it's really near and dear to your district, being that you represent both the Apache tribe as well as the communities of uh, Pine Top Lakeside. Um, it wasn't too long ago that you were president of the Sunrise Board. And as mentioned earlier, those businesses really in Pine Top Lakeside uh, during the winter seasons count on it being a quote unquote good season. The tourism that comes up really drives business in their doors because they have lots of business that comes during this, the summer months, but during the winter months it can be very difficult for those businesses there, um, as, as you well know. And then also um, for the Apache tribe, it is on their land and it's their property, uh, it's their business, and so they're counting on those tourism dollars as well, um, and it's very important to them. Mm -hmm. And what a fitting opportunity for somebody that represents both communities and understands the needs of both communities to have represented them and done a great job there. That being said, I want to give you an opportunity to just talk about what it looked like when you came on board and some of the accomplishments that you guys were able to do uh, during your time as president of the board of Sunrise. You're exactly right. Um, Sunrise has been near and dear to me. Um, it's important to our region. It's a regional conversation. Um, when we look at uh, the tribe, that we certainly want to see that um, that the tribe understands the symbiotic relationship that exists and the need for Sunrise to be thriving and successful. So when it was established, uh, there was conversation of it struggling and um, how do we move forward. And so with the wisdom and um, I guess you're taking a leap of faith in a sense of the, of the White Mountain Apache Tribal Council and being able to develop a board that was separate from themselves to be over, to oversee um, the run I guess how Sunrise ran and to make sure that um, the fiscal responsibilities were being overseen in a sound way. That was a big part of their initial investment. And when we look at that, uh, there was, we were over, you know, a million dollars in debt. There was just a recent loan that was incurred by $1.5 million. So we had large debt that we were carrying and walking into. Um, this new, I guess, venture. And what did that look like? You know, businesses that they, they didn't want to do business with Sunrise. Um, it was hard to get new investors involved. Um, and so when we look at how much we've grown, those conversations are, are no longer part, I guess, of the struggle in a sense. There are businesses within the community who want to do business with us and who are reaching out and to Sunrise. Um, that debt is no longer part of the conversation and certainly looking forward um, 
and having a dollar set aside for large capital investments and looking at the future, not only you know next year or the year after that, but what is it going to look like 10 years from now and understanding the need for a year-round industry and trying to move to a year-round industry. One of the things that we have no control over is weather and we get more and more into, well, this year's season where we have warm weather how does that impact us economically it has a huge impact and so when we look at data from across the nation how are resorts like sunrise um, making decisions that are i guess good decisions that look and act weather and consider weather um, so if we're looking at zip line industry or if we're looking at um, long-term hiking or camping or you know all of these things that we haven't offered in the past um, certainly very important to growing the industry but not only you know from the the tribal perspective but looking at the interests of local perspective was very very important that we knew that the success of sunrise was important to the local economy and so with our success became the community's success we um, hired over 400 employees and were able to put over two million dollars just in salaries back into local communities we had local partners um, and being able to invest in their companies and putting more dollars back into the local economy all of those things are very very important in the time that i was able to serve both of the communities and looking at future growth. Thank you for your service sincerely on that. I know that there was a, a lot of successes and you did a wonderful job there and uh, now it's time for a new season and you're mm -hmm. doing some additional new things and we really appreciate your efforts there. I know just in my personal, uh, I've seen new opportunities there at Sunrise that attract people to come to the area, um, whether it be the zip line course or they have the 3D archery that brings in a significant number of people that they do the shoots that are up that way. So looking at the full year and all kinds of opportunities, it's really flourished underneath your leadership. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, it almost goes into my next couple of questions, which is based on your leadership style, and obviously you've been a strong leader in this region, uh, you're being recognized beyond this area. Um, recently you had an opportunity to go and speak in front of the UN. Um, your voice has been strong enough here that people respect it and wanted to hear from you at uh, various levels of government. Do you mind talking with us about what that was and, and the opportunity to go and speak in front of the UN? Sure. Um, what it was was, a, I guess, an invitation to speak to the special rapporteur who creates a report um, that develops in looking at poverty across the country. and so. And one of the interesting, interesting things about my particular district is the juxtaposition, juxtaposition of the community in a sense. I represent one of the highest uh, impoverished communities in the country. And so, and then, you know, you, we look at the opposite spectrum um, that is represented in my district. Um, how do you bring a sound voice to both of those important, I guess, people that need to be represented in our community? Um, poverty, when we look at poverty in tribal communities, how does that impact um, student success rate? How does that impact families from thriving? How does that impact our future economic growth? How does that impact business industry? It, all of, you know, all of those industries or all of those ideas have huge significant impacts when poverty is part of the conversation. So my responsibility there was really to shed some light on what that looked like in our community. And um, certainly, you know, growing up on the reservation and understanding the challenges and circumstances that exist around that um, is part of, I guess, of my life story and creating my understanding and my perspective. So in also even in the education world and seeing our students come into the school building, what does that look like? How have they been impacted? Um, by lock, lack of economic growth. 
all of those things have huge, huge, um, I guess, outcomes on the student success rate or family success rate. Um, and part of that conversation, which is, you know, and this is kind of a touching, touchy subject with me in a sense uh, that um, part of that conversation surrounded suicide. What does that look like in our community? The White Mount Apache tribe has the the largest suicide rate in the country. Um, why is that? Why do we have that? Why is that part of our story? It shouldn't be part of our story. You know, you have a beautiful people with a beautiful culture and language and abilities, and yet this is something that's part of our journey, part of the way that people look at us. Um, and it's because we don't have industry, we don't have job resources. Um, when you look at unemployment rate, you know, you know the, the statistics, statistics vary on what that looks like, but when I'm looking outside, looking in, a majority of our families don't have job resources. And so that became part of this whole conversation on the UN Special Rapporteur and being able to create a picture of what our community looks like and how poverty is impacting our community. We're fortunate to have you as a voice. Obviously, it's being heard all the way to the national level, and so calling on you would make a lot of sense, and being able to speak and articulate about some of the very real and, and uh, serious issues that are going on in this region. Uh, I really appreciate your leadership there again. Um, you've also, outside of the UN, here at a local level or at a state local level, the state has called on you not too long ago before they started into this uh, legislative season. I know there was a number of women that were called upon to come down to the Capitol and be able to st speak about some serious issues. Your name was one of those names that was asked to come and speak. Do you mind speaking about why you were asked and what you guys had an opportunity to speak about? Sure. Um you know, all of these things are certainly um, an honor in a sense, and you and I take reflection in thinking of, well, why me? Why are they calling me? And I think about the importance of our voice and being able to utilize that. And, and so this whole conversation of women from across the state coming together and being asked to share a collective story specific. You know, this was the time where Trump made the disparaging remarks on Pocahontas. And so when we think about, well, what does that mean? You know, that's just a word. Well, it's not just a word. It takes away um, from the value of people. So when we look at the value of Native, Native women who are certainly making sound contributions um, to local communities and communities across the nation, um, who are educators, who are doctors, who are lawyers, you know, we can go down the road on the investment that Native women are making into our communities and to make such a racist remark and that was, you know, it was off the cuff, um, but how does that impact how we have dialogue among one another? If I'm trying to um, serve in the voice of leadership and being able to be a sound leader and being able to articulate what our needs are. Um, are you going to value me knowing that I'm a tribal woman, that I'm White Mountain Apache, that I'm Native American, um, that you need to value me, that you need to value every other woman who's within our community who has that so those same traits and so I, I wanted to make sure that I took the opportunity to speak on behalf of many women across the country who may have not been given the invitation to speak um, to this particular issue and certainly wanted to uh, make sure that there was value to that. Well, thank you for doing that. We're now nearing the end of our time here and want to say thank you for your leadership. You've been a strong voice locally. Uh, at the state level and at the federal level, and we're fortunate to have you in the position that you're in. Uh, trust isn't freely given, it's earned, and I certainly feel that you're doing all that you can to build the trust of not only your district, but all the citizens of Navajo County. We certainly appreciate you joining us here today, and we appreciate you joining us as we had an opportunity to be able to talk with the vice chairwoman, uh, chairwoman uh, about some of the accomplishments and things that she has going on. Until we see you again next time, thanks for joining us at Navajo County Connection.